Hello everybody. I thought I might finish off the uh, lesson or lecture or whatever that I started just a few days ago because I fin finished reading the uh, third essay of the genealogy of morality um, and the third essay deals with the question what do I ascetic ideals mean? Now when it's a good question firstly what is an ascetic ideal? What's an ascetic? Well an ascetic is usually a word used for somebody like a priest or a spiritual leader who um, refuses earthly pleasures, who refuses the um, physical pleasures of the world, um, perhaps in exchange for spiritual pleasure. Yeah, he, he doesn't want, um, he avoids certain uh, practices head, that he would perhaps consider hedonistic, like spirit, uh, physical pleasure, in exchange for something higher, in exchange for an imaginary world, I think uh, Nietzsche would often claim. Now, uh, in the third essay, he doesn't say a great deal more than he has already said in the uh, first two essays, although he does start his criticism of science. Um, so uh, you've, got, you've still got this idea, Nietzsche always thinks in terms of two different types of forces. For Nietzsche, I think every moment is an evaluation. This is why evaluation and interpretation is so important for him, because for Nietzsche to live is to interpret, to evaluate. That's part of living, that's part of life, and I suppose that's the everlasting part of life, that we always have to evaluate and we always have to judge, we have to interpret. And when he evaluates, at the very least, he always evaluates in terms of active forces and reactive forces, master morality and slave morality, um, because he sees there being, he, he considers uh, these two the most basic evaluations, I suppose, of existence. And when he looks at a philosopher or he looks at an artist, he is asking himself, can I find active forces in this philosopher or can I find reactive forces? He wants to know what kind of ideas um, are represented by, in, by the artist or by the philosopher. Are they reactive ideas? Are they um, unhealthy ideas? Or are they healthy ideas? Do they affirm existence as, as it is? Or do they negate existence as, as it is? And really this is a very important point for Nietzsche, that evaluation is key, is what it means to live. Um, so he talks about what ascetic ideals mean, and one thing that Nietzsche is very famous for saying, and I think it's in genealogy that he says it, but I can't remember precisely, is there are no facts, there are only interpretations. So again, this is this idea that there's no such thing as a true world, a real world, not in the sense that is often spoken about, as in a world sitting out there for us to discover. Um, he doesn't believe there are facts for this reason. Now, I know that very often nowadays children are taught that there's a difference between a fact and an opinion. Now, I actually agree with Nietzsche that there is no difference, and actually all facts are opinions, they are interpretations. Um, even a fact which you might think is absolutely always true, you don't know it's absolutely always true, not under all conditions. Even if we take something simple like water bo boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, if you change the pressure of that bottle of water or that glass of water, it's very easy to make it boil at a much lower temperature. And in this sense, you can't lay down absolute truths. You really can't. There, any kind of uh, absolute truth that you think is absolutely true, it may actually be mistaken. And in this sense, he says, there are only interpretations, because to live is to interpret. Now, we've already seen how uh, Nietzsche talks about the man of resentment. And this is when man first becomes sadistic, if you like, um, because he negates the active forces, he negates the world around him, and he blames 